So I got my hands on the Galaxy S8. These are pretty looking things. You probably already knew that though. I was lucky enough to get my hands on these pre-release models before the actual retail version is available. And I figured, hey, you guys are gonna wanna know about these devices, the, the ups and downs, the things I like, the things I don't like, and so on. So that's why we've got the video the way that we do today. It's a bit of a, a, bit of a hot take, if you will. I've been using the S8 Plus for somewhere in the neighborhood of 24 hours. So I have some thoughts. One of the things you're gonna notice right away, the footprint is very similar to the Pixel XL. What ends up happening here through the elimination of the bezels on the right and left side and these extremely thin bezels on the top and bottom is you end up with more display and less body, less phone body. So once again, as a comparison. Now I think a lot of people are gonna pick up this phone and go, man, it's such a big screen, but it feels so thin. Well, there's certain applications like video, for example, in which this aspect ratio is a bit bizarre. So if I go ahead and launch YouTube, the entire interface, um, you know, you're taking up top to bottom. It's all usable space. But then you notice those things that you were trying to avoid those bezels, they come right back. One of the reasons that a lot of people go for a bigger display in the first place is to have a bigger video viewing experience. But since nothing truly fits this aspect ratio natively, you end up with these black bars. Now granted, within the app, there's the opportunity to punch in. But what you notice there is the top of my head, for example, starts to get chopped off a little bit because video makers like myself, we're not framing or creating for this bizarre aspect ratio. It sounds like I'm, I'm hating on this decision. I'm really not. It's just something that you should probably know. Now talking about the screen a little bit more, this is, uh, it's the nicest screen ever put on a smartphone. It's OLED. Now, a weird thing about the brightness, if you scale it up to, the, to full blast, it kind of gives you a warning. Experience the highest quality display with maximum brightness and screen re resolution. This may reduce your battery life. The weird thing is the way I'm looking at this is in the, in the wake of the Note 7, of course, that whole fiasco with batteries expanding and exploding and so on, it's not the most confidence-inspiring thing to have the manufacturer tell you to not use your device at maximum capacity. It's blue all the way up, and you get to the very end, and it turns orange. To me, there's a, a strange kind of subconscious implication that I'm not using the device properly or that I'm pushing it to the extreme. There's also this performance mode button, dedicated button, which will push your brightness up 10%, it's that last 10% represented by the orange color on the bar. And then it'll also give you the actual screen resolution that you were buying, the WQHD Plus. This is where things get super weird. By default, out of the box, you're not getting the full res of the display, which, by the way, the most beautiful display ever. You would think, hey, Samsung, you've, you've innovated here. You've created this incredibly beautiful display, wouldn't you want people to have all the pixels out of the box? By default, it's in FHD+, plus, so 2220 by 1080, so a little bit beyond 1080p, but of course not nearly as groundbreaking as this WQHD+, plus, 2960 by 1440. This is where that resolution is going to run in the center, and you've got to decide to go up to the next one. Once again, for me, not the most confidence inspiring thing. Maybe this is about giving you option, but this Note 7 thing is looming. It's looming over a lot of customers' heads. And if you don't believe me, go watch the 90 million views that they're buying on that commercial about quality assurance. I think it should be full res out of the box with the option to toggle it down if you want increased battery performance. Going with this incredibly beautiful design has the consequence of not having huge batteries in the first place. So this is 3,500 milliamp hour, 3,000. No real increase there from the previous models. And that's something I think a lot of customers would have liked. Something worth mentioning is that the S7 Edge had a tiny bit more battery than this bigger footprint device, the S8 Plus. It's worth noting, but you have the ability to set up edge panels. So you could hide some apps in there if you like it. My issue with having this thing over here is inevitably what ends up happening is in a particular app where I'm grabbing from the side of the display to scroll, especially if you're using the device in landscape mode and you're kind of scrolling up and down, sometimes you can toggle that accidentally. So the device I've been using, I just turn that off. Another big thing worth mentioning is what Samsung has done with the software here. It seems weird to say, but it's probably my favorite development. I like the kind of stripped down clean version 
version of Android as it was intended. Now, Samsung has made their own tweaks to this skin. This thing in no way reflects what TouchWiz used to look like. In fact, it's a lot closer to the way the Pixel looks and stock Android behaves. By default, you have no apps natively in the display section here, like you would on an iPhone, for example. They're all hidden in this little drawer, which you pull up on. Look at this, way cleaner. For the first time ever, I've got the back button in the right location. You can swap the back button to the other side which is the way that it's been. Another thing to mention, in the absence of a physical button, this home button here on the SA Plus and the SA has a little haptic feedback to it, similar to what the iPhone has. But I like that, they, that they're not taking up too much real estate with that section either. These are nice little buttons. These two phones actually have the same resolution, the same resolution potential. There is absolutely no pixel breakup at all. I don't know that the human eye is capable of picking up that variance in pixel density at this scale here, but it's an interesting thing to note. One of the things I appreciate about these displays is the fact that they have this cool color temperature. You can toggle this blue light filter to warm up the tone. And if I click down here, Another nice thing is you can kind of toggle how much of it you want. So you might like a, a really warm tone or something a little bit cooler. There's this whole thing about using warmer tones at night, help you go to sleep. I wouldn't know about it. 3 a.m., I'm trying to go to bed, you know how that goes. So there's been a little bit of talk, a little bit of chatter about the speaker situation on these devices, which is a little bit strange to me because it seems pretty obvious there's a single speaker grill, even though there were rumors that we were going to have stereo speakers on here. Not so much the case. You have a, a similar speaker layout to the old stuff, you see. Of course, we have USB Type-C added now and still a traditional headphone jack, which I know a lot of people are gonna be happy about. They're gonna include some pretty high-end AKG headphones with the retail version of this device. Chances are they're gonna be a huge step up on what you're used to receiving included in the box. Message boards, stock quotes, news, email notifications, Google Analytics. I heard McDonald's is hiring. You ever flip a burger? So the front-facing camera got an improvement in terms of number of pixels. So it's an eight megapixel front-facing camera now. On the back though, you still have 12 megapixels. From what I can tell though, from what Samsung is saying, there are some software differences in how these images are being handled. Theoretically, maybe there's a slim improvement. I think you're gonna see images very close to what the S7 was doing. It's really amazing the quality of images we're making right now. You now have QHD available on the front facing camera. When we switch to the back facing camera, of course, we go all the way up to UHD. You can see the default setting is FHD 1920 by 1080. Plenty of options above that, which you have to select yourself, including a 60 frame per second option at 1080p. <laughs> this might be a huge consideration. This might, oh my goodness. This might be the deal breaker for you. It's hard to take a bad photo on this camera. I'm not like condemning the device as a whole here when I talk about the fingerprint scanner. When I pick this up, look, look where my hand falls. Boom. I mean, it's just so natural for it to fall there. But the issue here is that the fingerprint sensor is right beside it. Maybe this was the only place they could put it, but maybe they could change the shape. I don't know. What ends up happening? You end up putting your finger in many cases on the camera lens and smudging it up. This gets even funnier when you first launch the camera app in which the app prompts you to wipe your lens. <laughs> There's also a couple of other options for unlocking the device. The iris scanner, which takes way too long, so I'm not gonna use that. And it's a little odd because sometimes you wanna unlock your device without looking clearly at it, like lining up, like as if you're taking a selfie. Your other option is this face unlock, in which case you hold it up to your face, it's incredibly quick and so on. But that one makes me nervous because I'm like, this face is out there. I just don't feel secure with it. So I'll be using this fingerprint sensor even though it's a little bit odd. Oh, this is kind of cool. The adaptive display, this again allows you to to optimize the color range, saturation, and so on. Select from these options here, AMOLED Cinema, which is a slightly warmer tone, AMOLED Photo, this dedicated button for this assistant called Bixby. This could be useful in the same way that Google Assistant is. You can still launch Google Assistant if I hold down here on the home button, you'll see. But they've given it this dedicated button, so for most users, they're gonna click on the side over here. Now, I looked around the settings menu, I can't find any kind of way of remapping that button to something else, which would have been nice. If I click this little button in the corner here, it brings up this thing called Bixby Vision, which is probably the coolest part of Bixby right now. After I pop off a photo of the camera, it'll bring up similar things 
that, that it's searched for on the web. I don't know Im immediately how that's useful. You take a picture of a banana, what do you see, more bananas? Okay, how are you gonna compete with Google? So the big question remains, Galaxy S8, S8 Plus, does it suck? You can probably tell, no, not at all, all right? It's a beautiful thing, you'll be happy if you buy it. You just gotta figure out if you could have spent that extra money on something else. You go with a cheaper phone, all of a sudden, maybe you take a vacation, you meet the love of your life, now you're on a sailboat. Or you could just spend alone time with your S8, you pervert. Dollar Shave Club. You heard that name kicking around in the past. You're probably spending a boatload of cash on your razors right now because you want to look clean. You want to look slick like Tom. It's important in life to protect your most valuable resource. Do you know what that resource is, Tom? Your face. Wrong! Time. That resource is time. It's the one thing you'll never get more of. These guys right here, what do they do? They send you package in the mail so you don't even need to think about sharp razors. What is that dull one doing for you? It's messing all this up. Well, you, you think this comes cheap right here? How long does this take? Not long. Sure, bud. You get a package in the mail. They take care of you once a month. Now you're thinking, wow, once a month? That must be expensive. It's not. In fact, right now, it's one dollar. One dollar, that should take care of the terrible smell coming out of you right now. <laughs> It's got the shave butter in here. This is a deluxe kind of setup. We have the razor blades, the body bar, so maybe you're more this kind of guy, I don't know. You know in the store, something like that with the metal and the grip, you're paying something for that. Certainly not a dollar. For the first time ever, Tom will be shaving for you. Why did you leave? Now, Tom was telling me earlier what he likes is he likes to kind of trim up a little bit. He likes to leave a little bit of something going on there. Everything you need to get cleaned up so you can lead a better life. One dollar to get started, dollarshaveclub.com slash unboxtherapy. How can they look like you, Tom? Dollar Shave Club.